Welcome to Mosul. This is going to be a difficult one for us. Just being able to cross this bridge shows the progress. Thank, Thank you. you. Shukran. Wow, this looks completely different. Cheers. Cheers. It is so good to see the young people of Mosul rising up. Good morning and welcome to Mosul here in Iraq, a city with over 6,000 years of history but in recent years it has been plagued by war, by terror and the invasion of ISIS back in 2014. From Erbil we took around a one and a half hour drive with our friends from Al Rafidain on the road to Mosul. Firstly we need to leave Kurdistan check through that checkpoint and then there should be two or three the other side uh, two from the federal Iraqi forces and one from a local militia I think. The city is actually separated into two parts uh, the east and the west bank by the Tigris river we are currently on the eastern side which was less plagued uh, by the war by the destruction but we're going to cross over to the western side the old city which unfortunately um, was really badly damaged during the war with ice and even this bridge that we're stood on right now that separates the two sides has been rebuilt in recent years there were five bridges but all of them were, take it, were taken out this is going to be a difficult experience but it's great to see that they're rebuilding they're changing and they're growing welcome to Mosul without our friend Amar I think it would have been a very difficult and a much longer experience to pass through the multiple checkpoints and for us this is going to be a very sombering experience you know the only time we ever really heard of Mosul was on the news on the TV and of course it was only about the negatives and about how destroyed the city had become um, so this is going to be this is going to be a difficult one for us we pass through the eastern side you can see all the new buildings there's universities being built and then just behind me you can see the contrast um, yeah this is this Even is going to be distance, in, you, can, you can see the destruction you can just being able to cross this bridge shows the progress in the city of Mosul. Like we said, ISIS destroyed all of the bridges, the five bridges crossing the Tigris. And then in 2022, the one we're walking on currently was rebuilt. Um, but some of them you can see where they've just built over the destruction and underneath is the hanging destroyed bridge. We've made it to the west bank of the river. We're actually heading to the Al Nouri Mosque first. And this area that we're in at the minute is actually an area that is being rebuilt, has been rebuilt. Um, you can still see signs of devastation. Um, and it is, you know, this isn't even gonna be the worst of what we see today. And it still is so harrowing to see what they had to experience and what the city but you can was see how many like. people are out they're rebuilding they're yeah. redoing the electrics yeah it's growing they actually believe that around 500,000 homes were destroyed in Mosul by ice during the war and this area here um, you can see there's so many construction workers they're putting the electrics back up there's scaffolding they're rebuilding but there are areas like Molly said that we'll head to a little bit later I don't want to dwell I don't want to be here and dwell on what's happened in the past that's why we want to show what's happening now the rebuild and and the progress that is being made in this city You'll notice a lot of this around Mosul where UNESCO are rebuilding the old historical houses but then next door is one that was completely destroyed. And this is the Al Nouri Mosque. Uh, this was dating back to the 12th century. A very, very old mosque here in Mosul and unfortunately also completely destroyed. Uh, they're actually currently rebuilding it so for obvious reasons you cannot go in but just outside you can just see the pure destruction. Um, I have no words to describe 
all the things that we're I think see. it shows every religion is affected in this city. No one was spared. In 2014, this mosque was actually the site of where Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS at the time, declared the Islamic Caliphate in one of his only appearances that he filmed. Um, it's eerie. It's very eerie to be here. Um, but there you go, behind UNESCO is working to revive the spirit of Mosul and that is what we want to talk about today. Let's not dwell. I can keep saying it. No dwelling. We were just walking the street near the Al Nouri Mosque. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of shops, there's cafes and there's restaurants and there's actually a very famous kubar place that one of the locals just told us to check out um, and I think it's here I think you can see them making it because there is like flour and things everywhere um, we've had kubar once in Baghdad but it's supposedly most famous and does it originate here in Mosul? Let's say it's the dish of Mosul. We'll say it's the dish of Mosul. They've actually been nice enough to let us into the kitchen where they make the kuba um, and it's so cool. They have the pastry, they flatten it down, they put the meat, they flatten it down, they put water or wet it or something, flatten it down um, and then I don't know what happens. <laughs> Shukran. Shukran, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this looks completely different to the one that we tried in Baghdad. The one we tried in Baghdad was more like a roll. So basically, kuba is, I would say, pastry, like dumpling type pastry, um, where they flattened it down and inside is rice and meat and herb, and then they flatten it down with more pastry as you saw the guy doing it. The one we had in Baghdad was in a roll, like a ball, like a proper dumpling, but this looks completely different. We're sat in the cafe next door to try our kubal, but it is rather prominent that the seats that lead on to the building next door to the cafe and the restaurant of the building that was completely destroyed. But let's try this. The good, the new, the great restaurants, the kubal. Kubba. Kubba. Oh, it's good. Is it different to the one we had in Baghdad? Yeah, this is just more like a pie. A pie with mint, I presume, beef. For that whole pie, it came to 1,500 Iraqi dinar, which is like one dollar. And even here in Mosul, they didn't want us to pay. They were adamant that we couldn't pay, but in the end, he took our money. But we are now on our way to head to a street that's become pretty famous in Old Mosul. Within the destruction, they have built up a multicolored street with cafes, some souvenir shops, and it just looks so different and really does showcase the change and the growth of this city after the war. Look at this. This is not what I was expecting in the city of Mosul. This is a very new area. There is a photo on the wall which does actually show you what this street looks like. But it's basically a, um, a street of like shops. You have like shops with plants, you have a barber shop, and you have museums and cafes and the art galleries along here. It's kind of like a new and uh, hip area. So this is what the street looked like just a couple of years ago. And now, this is it today. The people of Mosul are rising up. We were actually planning on um, hopefully purchasing something from the artists and the galleries here because they actually uh, make it here themselves and I think they give the money back to the community, right? Um, so we were actually hoping to buy something, but unfortunately Everything's closed they're today. closed. They're all closed. They, you can see that you have like paintings, candles. Oh my God, the candles look really, really cool. We did find one place that was open, which actually turns out to be the museum, um, which is actually an old restored house. You can see there's an office, there's a children's room, and upstairs there is a cafe, so we can have tea. This is one of the old museum rooms, and they have all these antiques and photos from around Mosul from over the years. It's time for chai. This is Salam. This is so cool. You come upstairs um, and you can really see how it is like an old traditional dar. A little bit like a Riyadh with the courtyard 
below and a lot of important people have visited here over the years, um, well the recent years. Macron, President of France, came to show unity with the people of Mosul and look what they're achieving. Even in the most beautiful of places, you are reminded of what happened before right here is where a bomb hit and that would have probably presumably destroyed Salam, Habibi! <laughs> Destroyed the whole building. Cheers! Cheers! This is so cool. A uh, an Iraqi tea here in Mosul. I love what they've done with the museum, you know, turning it into a cafe upstairs. This is burning my fingers. Is this what you think of when you think of Mosul? No. It's not, is it? It's not. And I'm glad that we get to show it because we will be showing both sides of the city that as is much great as tea. i keep saying not to dwell i don't think we could come to mosul and not check out some of the areas that have been heavily affected by the war but also don't want to dwell on the um the situation because there are good things this, happening this things was like this. one of them areas that was completely destroyed exactly so it just shows as matt said many times the progress but of course we will show you those areas but as i've just said that is very good chai Wow, this is crazy. They have now just opened the shops for us and it has what we said, handmade things throughout. Wow, this is so cool. We, we're gonna buy something. What do we buy? What do we buy? That is the question. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you very Habibi. much. Habibi, Shukran. You. How is life for you in Mosul now? It's very nice. It's good? It's very nice. Completely different? Completely different. And you own this company? This is your company, Mangusha? Yes, uh, it's mine. It's, it's my, uh, this first one uh, brand in Muslawi in Mosul. This is so cool. So this is what we bought our souvenir from Mosul, the Minaret Al Hamda. Which we is just there behind the scaffold and unfortunately it's completely destroyed again by ISIS but they're rebuilding. And we actually have our first souvenir and our, probably our only souvenir from Mosul and it is it is it so cool. To such a good organization. It is so good to see the young people of Mosul rising up, starting their own business. The future of the city is definitely in good hands, but like I said, you can't come to Mosul and not witness the destruction, the remains of the war. And we're actually walking towards an area that is one of the worst affected in the whole of the old city of Mosul. And behind me is a statue, a statue to commemorate the workers that have rebuilt the city, that have removed the rubble. Now this is a completely different world. It's really hard to fathom um, what it looked like before, but it's hard to also put into words what what I'm feeling right now as I'm walking through and I'm seeing there are some new houses and then most of it is just absolutely completely destroyed. You actually can't walk on quite a lot of it because they said that there are some undiscovered bombs. I think they're called IEDs. So um, what they would do, I would you leave IEDs in specific areas and it would mean when the Iraqi forces were coming they would have to come really slowly because they didn't know where the IEDs were. So therefore we have to walk on specific areas through here because they aren't sure where they are. It is really hard to describe what it is like to be in this area and how the people of Mosul must have felt when in 2014 ice took the city women had to leave the houses with only uh, a chaperone at all times and they had to cover everything in black even their hands they had to wear gloves people couldn't smoke people couldn't drink and if they were found doing any of these activities drinking smoking a woman leaving the house on her own um, they would be publicly executed and ice would get all the locals out to watch it to teach them that if they do this, they will be next. And like we said before, no one was spared. Muslim, Christian, this was a city that was full of people of different faiths. Churches destroyed, mosques destroyed. Wow. You can see how grand some of these houses used to be, Molly. The blues, the greens coming out. There's just so many colors inside the buildings. Huge arches, big doorways, dating back hundreds of years. Um, 
and family tradition has just gone. You can see here, this is all of the um, outside of the housing decorated beautifully and now it's just left into rubble. So apparently inside here is safe to walk around. We've, you can actually see it written on the wall, they write safe so that you know that it, it is, is safe. okay to come in. And it's written around, so this is basically being checked. And you can see all around this building, it says safe. You know that is just, it's so mind blowing that somebody has had to come and check these buildings out and they just get left like this. That has got to be one of the saddest things I've seen amongst all the destruction. You have to remember, you know, how many children were displaced, how many died, how many lost their families and lost everything. And I think that is an extremely poignant picture to put in the middle of the rubble. You can hear actually in the background they are moving away the rubble to make way for them to hopefully build it back up again. But yeah, that is... It's, it's difficult. Just, yeah, it's, it's awful. Walking around in front of some of the houses, you'll find this writing in red, and it basically says that Christians used to live in this house. We actually have met a local Yasser who is um, showing us around and he's telling us which buildings are okay for us to go into like this one here this was actually a house and I don't think wow. the camera will I don't think you'll be able to comprehend sitting watching this what it's like to be in somebody's home um, that's just been completely and utterly ruined and destroyed and to think about what they went through and, and you can they see how here. grand it used to be all the blues the huge archways it's just completely lost before 2014 before ice took the city jewish muslim christian they all lived side by side and we just get told stories of how christian people would live next to a muslim family they would be best friends and ISIS came and they would they would just kill their neighbours, they would kill the Christian family. Um, but it obviously wasn't just Christians, so many Muslims, Jewish, lost their lives. And still today, there are people that haven't been found underneath, underneath this rubble. Walking around, as I said, you'll see on the buildings where it is safe to walk into. Um, and actually the special forces checked these in 2021, back in November. I find, like, I, I struggle to explain how I feel when I'm walking around here, but to think that those people, the special forces, had to come and check this area. And the fact that a lot of the area is still dangerous now is... Um, it's very scary and so harrowing. The area that we're actually walking in now was the last stronghold of ISIS. The Iraqi forces were getting closer and on July the 9th, ISIS fell and the city of Mosul was liberated. I've never seen so much sheer destruction in my life, but within the rubble, you can see a couple of new houses they've rebuilt they've moved back in hopefully in a few years it'll be like this house all the way around i'm not so sure about this we're walking along one of the destroyed houses that doesn't have any information whether there's an ied or anything here but as you walk out to the end it's our friend amar who's been basically making all of this happen and behind is the Tigris and you can see the west side and on the west side there was relatively relatively no destruction um, the east side took took the full brunt you have the beautiful Tigris flowing through behind me it's strange but it's it's kind of peaceful how is the destruction still standing and right next to it functioning busy this market. is the main sook Look, of the old town the main sook of old mosul sitting amongst this it is 
a very crazy experience. Salam, the local fisherman of Mosul. We caught catfish. This is catfish. It's good. Collision, collision. Shukran. Masalama. Masalama. This is wild, just like any other market. The Shawana you trying to sell you all their catch of the day. There's some big old fish here. One of them is called Jori, I think, and it is a huge fish. This is the craziest market I have ever seen. There are fish absolutely everywhere. They are cooking the they are cooking the national dish, an official national dish of Mazkuf and there's a lot of fish guts. I feel like after I've walked out of here I'll be covered in fish guts. Just look at this. There are all the fish for sale and then he's about to cut it up. And this is the main part of the souk for Mosul. You can pretty much get everything. I'm pleased to be out of the fish. Yeah, the fish was a bit smelly. Just been handed a spoon. You can see, I think it's like peanuts or corns or something. They get brown, and at the bottom, the liquid comes out. Oh my god, it's warm. My mouth is stuck together. Drink with tea, bread. After everything the people of Mosul have been through, you maybe would be expecting stern faces, but we're walking along this market. See, I have a smile on my face because everyone is so friendly everyone is saying salam welcome welcome to Mosul how do you find Mosul they're so uh, they're passionate about their city and I just can't believe how friendly everyone is after what they've been through we've crossed over back from the east side of Mosul across the Tigris to the west and behind me is the huge mosque which used to be known as Saddam's mosque it's now just known as like the grand mosque of Mosul but because it was Saddam's mosque there's a thing throughout Iraq that they don't finish it. So they don't want to finish it, they don't want to rebuild it. It still has the cranes from, from all them years ago. Nosh. 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 Without you two, we would have definitely not made it to Mosul today. They got us through all the checkpoints. So thank you so you much, Shukran. Thank, thank you, you. Shukran. Shukran. Nosh, that was actually cheers in Kurdish. We are back in Erbil after what was, I suppose, a difficult day. To take it all in, it's, it's incredibly surreal, but it's great to see the growth of the city, the rebirth, and I cannot believe that it's only a one hour drive from Erbil to Mosul. The contrast between the two cities is incredible you wouldn't think that they are that close together but now we're back it's it's weird to be back here in a hotel like this drinking a beer um after being in mosul and it wouldn't have been possible without our friends from al rafidain um three or four checkpoints i mean if we tried to do it ourselves we would have been there all day i'm really pleased that we got to experience both sides of what mosul is like showing how places are being rebuilt seeing the new and modern side of it and seeing the younger people being able to build their businesses back up but also to be able to show you what the destruction actually you looks like it. you cannot ignore it you are going there to see what the city looks like now in 2023 and i think the experience for me i i can't still put it into words but it's i hope that you can see this something in the video I've seen on the news something I've seen in movies to actually walking through it was surreal. We hope we've shown it in a slightly different light for you because you know like in the TV and the movies it's always shown very differently um, but it is our last day in Iraq. We've had an amazing I think it's like 12 days now 12 days. with our Rafidane and our friends um, and it has been pretty spectacular. We've done so many different things, seen so many different places, um, and Mosul was basically the, the finish to the our time the cake. in the country. Good morning, and welcome to Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. Okay. Uh-oh. The very famous pigeon. Rock. Cheers. 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 Almazza. 